Now let me ask you a question, Emiliano. Sí. What is your interest in this? Eh, ti chiedemi quali sono i tuoi interessi? Beh, intanto sono stato a Gerusalemme e sono stato nella tomba del Santo Sepolcro. Quindi ho aspettato di leggere il libro dopo essere stato uh, nella, nella chiesa del Santo Sepolcro. E uh, il mio interesse è anche nel chiederti uh, un'intervista è stato proprio perché ho potuto avere un pochino più chiaro, perché non essendo un archeologo non ho uh, competenze, però di, um, di avere un'idea un, un più compiuta uh, tra quello che scrivi e quello che è uh, l'edificio. E in particolare uh, te poni tanta, uh, tanto parte del libro sull'edicola, che sarebbe la cappella quella dove poi si ritiene essere uh, la tomba di Cristo. So, um... My, my interest is, uh, grew when uh, I went uh, to, the, to the Holy Sepulchre and uh, I waited to read your book until uh, I, I went there uh, in order to, um, to better understand uh, what, what you say and uh, the archaeological information that you provide. And um, for example, you, um, you focus a lot about the edicola, the um, uh, Syrian chapel, on which is, uh, on, in, in, in where is located the, the tomb. And, um, qualcosa le avevi chiesto, mi scusami, dopo l'edicola? No, che praticamente è, sì, è come se fosse una chiesa in una chiesa. Cioè, c'è la chiesa so grande. Yeah. yeah, I understand. So it's like a church in a church. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so... Uh, uh, Ed è straordinario di come anche nel corso dei secoli si sia sempre cercato di mantenere questa um, edicola costruendoci una, una chiesa molto più grande uh, sopra, uh, cosa che credo si esista solo ad Assisi, con la chiesa della Porciuncola. So yes, um, the the fact is um, they they built a church over another church over a chapel, which is almost unique because, uh, as far as I know, I can be wrong. Uh, the other attestation of a, a church over a chapel is in Assisi, in the Portuncola, in the place of Saint Francis. So you focus a lot. Uh, On this fact of the e, of the ed, è, ed è bello di come, ecco, è cosa che vorrei che tu ci parlassi un proprio dell'edicola e, de, e delle varie eh, modifiche che sono state fatte nel corso dei secoli. Questo è stato anche il mio interesse più... Okay. So, one of my highest interests um, would be fulfilled if you talk about uh, a, a little bit this chapel and... Uh, its modification during the centuries, because this is the point of interest which has uh, stimulated a lot uh, my curiosity. Yes, well, I'm happy to do that, but I'd like to know, Emiliano, from what point of view you come. Uh, are, are you a um, historian or a professor of religion or, 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 or are, are, are you a cleric? What is the situation? Eh, io sono, sei un eh, professore di storia, sei un eh, insegnante di religione, sei un chierico, qual è la tua situazione? Io sono un giornalista, psicologo, appassionato di storia. So, I'm a journalist, psychologist, and in love with history. Yes, well, that's all very reasonable. But, but why your interest in this particular? Perché sei interessato qui in questo... In, que in questa cosa particolare. Perché, perché mh, sia con il giornale che con uh, personalmente uh, adoro um, investigare tutto ciò che riguarda direttamente o indirettamente, cristianamente o laicamente, la figura di Cristo. 
So, because uh, both uh, with the newspaper and both with uh, uh, for my personal interest, uh, I, I'd like uh, I love to investigate uh, around the um, the figure of Jesus Christ, both uh, in a Christian sense and both in a lay sense. So it's uh, actually every, everything about the the figure of Jesus Christ itself. Do you represent a particular church? No. Excuse me? I mean, I, are you well, I didn't understand, sorry. Are you, well, are, are you a professor of theology or, 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 or what exactly? You're a psychologist. I'm a psychologist. You're a psychologist? Yeah. And you're interested in? I am journalist what? and psychologist. psychologist. I see. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, like, both... I am a Christian journalist. You're a Christian journalist. Yeah. And for whom do you expect to write about this discussion? Per chi ti aspetti di scrivere? Per chi è il tuo pubblico a cui ti rivolgi? A chi ti rivolgi? Io mi rivolgo a tutti perché lo faccio in maniera tra virgolette laica, credenti e non credenti per dare eh, il più possibile degli elementi oggettivi eh, su quelli che sono gli, eh, le cose oppure gli avvenimenti o i monumenti, in questo caso, cristiani. Cioè, cosa so, sempre dipende I dalla write storia. For... Ok. So, I write for everyone, believers and non-believers, uh, in order to provide... Uh an objective point of view of the history and the monuments and everything related to the figure of Jesus Christ. But it's uh, uh, something done uh, in a lay way, directed to everyone. So it's regardless of the faith, but it's uh, to provide an, ob an objective uh, point of view over these questions. Yes, well, I, I appreciate that because I would think that is quite close to our own particular feeling. We approach this uh, as an archaeological monument and not um, as with any viewpoint at all other than to discover what the history of this rather complicated little building might be. That was our, that was our whole objective, uh, whether or not um, it marks the site of the bearer, the person we know as Jesus, is, is I think, a, remains a matter of faith. Um, certainly, we had no evidence about that. All we can say at the most is that um, from the time of Eusebius, certainly, that was believed to be the case. He doesn't tell us his evidence. This is the very interesting thing. He just says in these Greek words that I quoted, parapes and elpida, beyond all expectation. I mean, it's beyond all hope, actually. Elpis means hope. But it really, the translation is beyond all expectation. We found this. Um, and of course, we know what's happened. It's one of the most, the most important Christian church in the world. Um, it is extraordinary. Um, I think that one's got to I think it's quite clear that there were all kinds of traditions and memories in Jerusalem. Melito of Sardis, writing in the early third century AD in Greek, talked about the burial place in the middle of the, and the Greek word is plataia, in the middle of the square, could also mean a very wide street. Um, which could again be this, um, but um, one, one doesn't really know. So what we have here is something which a, a bishop of Jerusalem, who obviously has his own viewpoint, decided to investigate, and the results of that we, we know in detail. But whether whether he was right or whether he was wrong, uh, nobody can tell. Um, 
Do you know, in fact, that there has recently been an opening of the tomb? My question to you. Emma. Okay. Okay. First, I translate and then I... Mm. Yeah. Do you know that it, the tomb has recently been opened? Dice, dice, sai che la tomba è stata recentemente aperta? Poi traduco. Allora, eh, apprezzo molto il fatto che eh, tu stia investigando da questo punto di vista che, è, che abbiamo in comune, quindi della ricostruzione oggettiva, eh, perché appunto noi stiamo parlando di, di un monumento, eh, quindi di architettura, e poi separiamo la questione della fede, anche perché lo stesso Eusebio quando scrive di questa tomba lui dice oltre ogni aspettativa oltre ogni speranza quindi dà il suo la sua interpretazione e, e però lascia tutto a, a, a quello che ci dice lui quindi che sia o che non sia il punto effettivo del del, del sepolcro di Gesù ecco eh, que, que, well, questo non c'è dato di saperlo Have you seen the article in the National Geographic magazine? Hai le letto tante volte un articolo nel National Geographic, l'articolo sulla sul Santo Sepolcro? No? No. <laughs> no. Well, it's a very interesting business. Hmm. Um, there has been the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the whole building has been for a long time in very bad condition. The, the British, during the British mandate of Palestine, mm -hmm. did a lot of work. And just before the British left, they were so worried about the edicule, which was going like that, that they strapped it in steel. And in my book, you can see pictures of the great steel girders which were used to hold it together. But they did nothing more. They just cramped it, literally, mm -hmm. in a framework to hold it together. Okay. Now, that, have... has, that has all recently been removed. Okay. Quindi, it no eh... longer looks like this. Okay. Per molti anni il Santo Sepolcro è stato in condizioni veramente pessime. Ed è durante il mandato britannico della Palestina che gli inglesi si sono occupati dell'edicola che stava collassando su se stessa, si sono preoccupati di questa edicola e mh, vi, hanno, vi hanno messo, vi hanno piazzato una struttura di metallo a sostegno che è stata rimossa soltanto recentemente. Mm -hmm. e quindi ci sono stati i lavori di restauro partiti durante il mandato britannico della Palestina. I think you should get hold of the National Geographic magazine for um, it may be the last, I think it's the last issues of 2016. It might be the first issues of 2017. And there's a big article in there which describes partly the excellent work of restoration of the edicule by the Greek National Archaeological Institute uh, of Athens and also reveals that the tomb was opened in October 1916. Okay. Uh, 2016. October 2016, just two, okay. two years. But you, you, you should obviously read that. Quindi dovresti procurarti il National Geographic, dovrebbe essere o l'ultimo del 2016, il primo del 2017, comunque quel periodo lì, perché c'è un articolo dove appunto spiega tutta l'opera di restaurazione da parte del, della società archeologica greca. Eh, che è stata con, con la conseguente anche apertura del, dell'edicola nell'ottobre del 2016. Quindi c'è un articolo del National Geographic 
proprio riguardante il restauro e l'apertura dell'edicola. Dell the, um, the, the restoration of the epicure, I, I mean, it's all online now, you can find it. Mm -hmm. It's associated with the name of a woman called Antonia Moropoulou, M-O-R-O-P-O-U-O-U, Moropoulou. 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 And there's a lot to be found online. I mean, a lot. But one incident in that was for 60 hours late in October 2016 in the tomb chamber. The tomb slab was pulled back. The tomb, excuse me? The tomb, if you go into the edicule, yes. there are two parts. There's a little first room, the mm -hmm. chapel yeah. of the angel, the chapel of, yeah. the, of, of the rolling stone, and then there's the tomb chamber beyond. And the, what is believed to be the site of yes. the grave is on the right-hand side of the tomb chamber, and it is covered by a slab of marble about the size of the table I'm sitting. Yeah, I, I see it. It's a very ancient. I saw piece. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very ancient piece of uh, marble. It had not been moved for at least five hundred years. But at night, in conditions of great secrecy, with very few people present, it was pulled back in October 2016. Okay. okay. Quindi nell'ottobre 2016, in una notte per poche ore la lastra di marmo che va a coprire la tomba, quindi posta nella parte più piccola dentro l'edicola, dentro la cappella, è stata rimossa per pochissime ore e solo alla presenza di poche persone durante la notte per evitare evidentemente i flussi turistici. Comunque sì, è stata rimossa la lastra di marmo che, che è piazzata appunto sul posto dove si ritiene sia stato sepolto Gesù Cristo. Well, you can read Sono... a little bit about yeah. that in the National Geographic Museum okay. um, magazine, but almost nothing else. And it is a very, very serious matter because it was not archaeological. It was simply pulled back to see what was there. No proper records were made of what was seen. There are some National Geographic photographs which concentrate on the workmen pulling the stone back. No proper photographs were made. An earlier grave slab was found with an inscription which was not properly recorded or photographed. And then it was closed again. The whole Quindi, thing is a, a scandal. Okay. So the, the, um, the fact that this, uh, this this stone was removed, was a scandal actually. To, to open the tomb okay. by people who were not professionally qualified as structural archaeologists, but oh, were simply so, restorers, was absolutely oh, so wrong. They were, okay, they, they weren't professors, the people who made this opening. Uh, this opening oh, no. wasn't no, no. made by professionals. There is no, to my okay. knowledge, there is no professional person who is present. A few members of the religious communities managed to get in and take some notes. And one uh, farmer, Father Amelio Rico, I think was his name, did a beautiful drawing. But it's all really, in, in reality, completely unrecorded. The, I okay. had written to the people in charge before they started the restoration, but they never replied. And okay. all this is quite typical, but it, it is in fact, if I may say so, a major scandal. Ok, quindi, okay. quindi allora il, il fatto è che quando è stata fatta questa apertura non sono state fatte né registrazioni né relazioni, è stata Tutta questa apertura è completamente non documentata, non ci sono documenti riguardo a questa apertura 
se non delle attestazioni da parte di un monaco, di comunque dei cristiani che hanno, eh, che hanno assistito e che ne hanno fatto un disegno. Per il resto non ci sono attestazioni e questo lo considero uno scandalo perché comunque si tratta di un luogo sacro, un ritenuto sacro e il, fa il fatto che sia stata fatta questa operazione eh, senza nessun tipo di registrazione, senza nessun tipo di relazione è scandaloso. Sono perfettamente d'accordo. Anche perché si sono persi tanti dati importanti. So, I perfectly agree, yes. So well, I, was lost in, a lot of, uh, yeah. I was in Jerusalem in February this year, mm -hmm. partly with some of my family for a family holiday, but I booked two days to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And I went and talked to people in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and uh, two people in particular who i'm not going to mention any names one secular and one a uh, religious and um, who knew what had happened and i i intend to write an article about it in fact um so i'm trying to gather the facts because what was revealed was very important it doesn't tell us at all it has nothing to do with where it really was the tomb of Christ. It just reveals more about what was happening to it in, shall we say, sort of the, the fifth to the 10th century or the fifth to the 11th century. We now know a bit more, but they don't know because they don't understand what they saw. It, it, is, it is truly a scandal. Quindi, allora, quando sono stato a Gerusalemme questo febbraio con la mia famiglia sono entrato in contatto con un laico e un religioso eh, che hanno assistito a questa apertura e sto cercando voglio intendo scrivere un articolo su questo voglio informarmi più per scrivere un articolo su questo fatto perché il discorso è eh, qui non si tratta tanto di sapere se è la tomba effettiva di Gesù Cristo no, ma si tratta di avere dei dati importanti a livello archeologico del periodo che va dal V al X secolo d.C. Certo. perché appunto si diceva che la testazione viene dal IV secolo d.C. quindi tutto il periodo che va a coprire eh, dal V al X ci può, cioè, sono attestazioni che comunque sono mancanti sì, nel libro ne parla. Le uh, prime so vere attestazioni. Yeah. Uh, just a question. So, you mean all, all the period between the formation of the, of the church, the establishment of the church, and uh, uh, the crusades? Yeah, yes, if, if, if you like. That's what... Yeah. Yes, diceva, I mean, tutto il periodo è it tal... is very, very difficult to know. Okay. In my view, what was discovered was a broken, uh, there was a, the, the great slab, which is there today, that you must have seen the pictures of in my book here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that is now back in position. They pulled that out. You have to look at the National Geographic magazine to show you this. Underneath, there was another slab broken of black marble which had been inscribed, but broken across the, 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 the markings. Um, there's no proper record of that. Um, and uh, then only 60 hours were allowed for this to be seen. If my team had been there, we could have recorded to modern scientific requirements everything that was revealed in perhaps five, five to ten hours at the okay. most with proper photographs and proper drawings. Nothing like that. Nothing was done. Ok. So Quindi è costata rivelata... The National Geographic Magazine. Mm. Quindi sotto quella lastra è stata rivelata un'altra lastra di marmo nero, di marmo nero, che potrebbe essere utile per 
eh, da, da studiare se solo eh, fosse stato fatto un lavoro di documentazione appropriato, cioè se l'avessi, se ci fossi andato io con la mia squadra in eh, probabilmente una decina di ore, 5-10 ore avremmo potuto fare un lavoro di documentazione accurato con un metodo scientifico, cosa che non è stata fatta, è stata aperta per un lasso di tempo di una notte e, e non documentata secondo nessun, nessun metodo, nessun, nessun criterio, esatto. So I've given you a story there. Yeah. That's a story of international interest. È, 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 il, se, è il seguito del libro. <laughs> It's, uh, mm, it's, it's the, the what's next of the book. It's the oh yeah, absolutely. A absolutely, it's what next. There is more to say. And I'm going to write uh, a, a scholarly article about it. Okay. But um, this is the first time that I've spoken out about it. Most people in the world don't know about it. If you look at the National Geographic Museum uh, magazine, you'll find some photographs but nothing is really said about it. And uh, there's a lot to be said. So, I mean, I'm not sure we can do any more now. I've given mm -hmm. you a story there, which you can follow up. There's a lot to be found. Start with the National Geographic magazine. Okay. And talk Quindi c'è ancora molto da scoprire. E io ci ho solo dato una storia di partenza, un un filo logico da cui partire parti dall'articolo del National Geographic e, e poi ecco questa è la prima volta che ne parlo di, di questo avvenimento e appunto perché è stato di partenza di una ricostruzione più completa che appunto sì è, può essere considerata il sequel del libro effettivamente quindi dell'articolo su National Geographic e poi facciamo un... Eh, ed, ed è lì partiamo, un punto di partenza, ecco. Professore, io starei ad ascoltare la Dore. So, I, I, I would listen to you for hours. Amy? Sì, ma è tempo purtroppo di, di salutarla perché è, è passata quasi un'ora. Okay. So, time it's almost an hour. Zoom. Yeah. Yes, okay. Well, I think, I think you know where I come from. Yeah. And I think you know I've given you a story yeah. about what has happened. And if yeah. you want to investigate it, it's a world story. Yeah. You're a journalist. Sure. You can release it and I'll be happy as you write it to talk to you again. Yeah. Sure. Ok, okay. okay. quindi restiamo in contatto. Se vuoi scrivere un articolo okay. su exactly. questa faccenda, yeah. possiamo yeah. collaborare ancora. Yeah. We can, we can do collaborate it by again. email, we can do it by email, but yeah. we can also do it on screen. Yeah, so I, okay. I'm very happy to, to, okay. to go into it in detail with you. Ok, ok. Fine. Ok, Thank you very much. professore, grazie bye a lei. Bye. bye. Thank you so much. Grazie a lei. Grazie. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm going to have my supper now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me, me too. Me too. <laughs> Or your lunch, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Dinner, dinner. Okay. Dinner. Bye bye. Not, everybody. not the last supper. Not the last supper. <laughs> not the last supper. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's not get involved in that. Okay, Thank talk you, to professor. each other later, I hope. Thank you. Talk bye. to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.